couple notes while you're uh, <clears throat> marking these. Um, this long, this long mark from the the part where we marked the tip, and then this 12-inch mark up on the leading edge. It's kind of a hard, hard one to get to with like a ruler or something to get a straight line. So. What I do is I put a piece of masking tape or a piece of painter's tape along that edge, put it down, and then mark on it. Uh, it doesn't give you a perfect line, but um, it gets you close. And then with a method we'll be using later, we'll make sure that all the blades are the same. So. Run yourself a piece of tape down that line and then mark on it. That's what I do. Or use something that bends, a piece of cardboard or something like that, and uh, make your marks. On, on this one, it's, it's a lot shorter, so it's not so hard to do. You can just use a little notepad and uh, put it from point A to point B, and then run your mark down there. Try to get them as consistent as possible. Uh, they, are, they are windmill blades and uh, prefer preferably they should all be the same and be balanced. And I'll go over how to make sure they're the same here in a little bit. But try to get all your lines and all your cuts as accurate as possible on the front end. It'll save you a little bit of work on the back end. Okay, <clears throat> as you can see, the blades are starting to, you can see a, a form or a shape of the blade. Uh, this is the smaller PVC that I'm showing you here. You can see it from the top view. Um, but we're going to cut these sections out here and on all of them now that they're marked. And you can mark these off just so that you know where you're going to be cutting. Okay, when you do cut your lines, uh, make sure and cut on the outside of your your mark line so that you have room to sand and to uh, make adjustments if you mess up. So I have a line here. I'm going to run my cut just on the very outside edge of that cut. Uh, it's the waist side of the cut. So I'm going to go ahead and make those cuts on both these and my Schedule 40. You can see these are just going to be a lot thicker, a lot beefier blade. Um, kind of a little test for myself too, but I wanted to show you uh, both versions as we went through this. So let's make some cuts and I'll come back. All right, we're back. That was an awful mess. Uh, I've got these cut now. As you can see, they uh, are starting to look a whole bunch like a uh, windmill blade. Uh, just a note on tools, as I was cutting these sections, or cutting these uh, pieces off, I did notice that my circular saw uh, was quite a bit uh, easier to use than the jigsaw. So just a note, uh, jigsaw, I still did two of them with the jigsaw and I did two of them with the angle grinder. So uh, just felt a little easier. I was a little more comfortable with the angle grinder, uh, so you may want to try both. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut out the, uh, the um, Schedule 40 pipe uh, in the same manner. I'm going to shape them like this, and then we'll go on to uh, checking all of them to make sure they're the same. So what I've done here is I've taken my, my new set of blades, started on the inside going toward the tip, I measured every three inches down on the trailing edge and made a mark. Uh, you'll end up with only one inch on the end. So I put my marks down there and I took a square and I kept it along the trailing edge and then I made a mark on the leading edge all the way down as you can see. And I've done that on all four of my blades. Now remember we're going to have one spare. This is kind of where that comes in handy. If you have one blade that's cut way wrong or uh, that's, that's off completely, you can discard that blade and then just focus on the three that are the closest. 
So once you've, you've made those marks, those two marks all the way down the trailing and then the leading edge, take a tape measure and measure from mark to mark and put that distance on the blade all the way down. And then lay the blades out like this and then compare. Um, see this blade I have up here at the top? It's significantly larger than any of these other blades. So I've, I've been off on my cuts, on my measuring, somewhere I've been off. I'm uh, two and a half inches on these two and two and five sixteenths on this one. I'm at three inches on this one, two and a quarter here. So it's consistently larger all the way down uh, compared to these other three. So more than likely I'll set this one to the side and really focus on getting these three properly, properly cut and sanded. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at these numbers and see where I need to take off um, some plastic and I'm going to use an orbital, orbital sander to uh, sand down the edges. On the trailing edge it's okay to go ahead and make that pointed. Um, as pointed as you can it will reduce drag. So go ahead and take your sander and make a nice pointed edge. Um, I do all my edging once I've got my basic dimensions the same on all three blades. You don't want to make a nice edge and then realize you've got to take some off. So I go ahead and do all my sanding to get the blades the same size and then I will go and take the sander and run it down the trailing edge, make a nice point. Now on the leading edge, you're going to want to make it nice and smooth but you're not going to want to make it sharp because that is that is the leading edge and that's the cutting edge like on a lawnmower. So if you get your hand in your in your wind, windmill or something you're not going to want that to be pointed. So go ahead and just round off the leading edges, uh, round off the corners where we cut, uh, the back corners especially can be rounded off. You can round off all those corners. Um, you can smooth out the tip ends, but try to keep them as square as possible because at high speeds uh, it's going to help to have them square rather than pointed. So don't, don't make a nice rounded edge. Try to keep the squares, uh, the tip square. Uh, just take off the sharpness on the corners, but other than that leave it square. So I'm going to start working on all that. You can too. Um, this is a bit tedious. Uh, it's not for everybody, it's a do-it-yourself project and uh, I have a lot of fun with it and uh, the more I do of them the better I get at it. So uh, just go ahead and start in on your measuring and your sanding and I'll come back to you when I'm done with mine. Last time we talked about um, putting the marks down here and then looking at all three of the blades with the marks and uh, determining which one was the best, which one was the smallest because obviously you can't add more PVC to the blade. So when you're looking at all your numbers, uh, if this one's at three inches and this one's at three and three eighths and this one's at three and a quarter, you're going to need to go off of this one. So make sure that this one's at three inches and this one's at three inches and you need to do that all the way down the blade. So I've done that. Um, I also went over the entire surface with sandpaper with the uh, orbital sander um, just to scuff it up because we're going to paint it, prime it and paint it afterwards. But this is what the uh, finished blade looks like. Um, I put a, I just knocked the, the sharp corners off the edge here on the tips but I left it square. Uh, that's it. I hope this has been helpful and uh, please take a look around the website and see what else you can find. Uh, I'm actually not going to demonstrate that on the video because it's pretty self-explanatory and it's 32 degrees here uh, outside so uh, it's a bit too cold to be painting out here in the shop.